The global markets are in uncertain territory after the president announced he and the first lady have both tested positive for COVID-19. In the U.S., stocks dropped after the news was released but seem to be bouncing back. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is down slightly in the wake of the announcement. The S&P 500 has also fallen. But it's not just the U.S. markets feeling the effect of his diagnosis. The news also impacted global markets. Concern has escalated since the announcement over the future leadership of the largest economy in the world. Joining us now is Terry Haynes. He is the founder of Pangea Policy. Terry, welcome. Thank you so much for being with us. So the stock market dropped quickly after the news of President Trump testing positive for COVID-19. It is bouncing back uh, a little bit now. Why do we see this sort of early dramatic response uh, that's sort of normaling out now? Well, Tanya, and thank you for having me. I think the reason is pretty simple. Uh, when this first got announced overnight, uh, I think the president announced it after midnight, uh, U.S. Eastern time, uh, you're in the middle of the Asian market day. European markets haven't started yet, and there's very little known. Uh, so uh, certainly much less known. And in foreign countries, uh, you know, the vast majority of the world, there's very little understanding in a granular sense about uh, the effect on United States politics, the effect of the United States election, any of those things. So there is a, uh, I think there's an understandable response to say, you know, hey, hang on a minute, let's try to figure out what, uh, mm -hmm. the, what we're up to here. And then as things went along, uh, what you saw was the Asian markets recover. And uh, I've talked to people today who's, who, who, uh, said they were mixed, and I think that's absolutely the case. Uh, but there was no serious negative impact. Uh, European markets appear to be doing uh, you know, pretty much the same as always. And as you rightly pointed out, after an additional drop of about a percent, percent and a quarter uh, at the beginning of the market day here and today in the United States, uh, now we're back and forth on, uh, on whether we're in positive or negative territory, but barely. Uh, and Right. You know, the biggest thing out of Washington has really been uh, whether or not there's going to be a stimulus, not so much whether or not there's going to be uh, the president's uh, own health. And that narrative is starting to take back over again. Right. So you're saying that that's really what's going to move the markets. But so what does the president's diagnosis mean for the country's ongoing economic recovery, looking beyond the day to day of the market? I think, you know, my usual caveat on this will be, and has turned into today, uh, assuming that the president doesn't get, doesn't get significantly sick uh, or, you know, that there's some kind of a uh, succession crisis or worse, uh, you know, and, you know, even even though he is in a, a higher risk category, I mean, there's, there, the, you know, that's a relative, that, that's those scenarios are relatively low percentage shots. Uh, Assuming that that all happens, uh, I think the economics continue to improve. Uh, I don't think uh, the President Trump's diagnosis has any effect on the stimulus uh, legislation, but I've, I've been a bear on stimulus for over a month now, largely because uh, there's, there's no real desire to compromise. Both parties are split, not just one. Uh, uh, Speaker Pelosi's party is, uh, is split also, and she's doing her current compromises uh, as a political give to her centrists who might actually lose the election and with it uh, uh, the majority of the House uh, if she doesn't try to get something. Uh, she just announced within the last hour that something was going to happen uh, on airline relief, and th that's very good news for airlines. But uh, my initial reaction to that was that it cut off a good part of her leverage in trying to get a bigger bill. Uh, she's hopeful for a bigger bill, as, as is the the White House, uh, but I don't see, uh, you know, I see her party, uh, uh, her party somewhat riven about the size of the stimulus on a, on a larger mm -hmm. end, just like the Republicans are on a lower end. So, you know, I'm up at about 40% mm -hmm. uh, likely that stimulus happens. Uh, it's by no means mm -hmm. unthinkable, uh, but I think the politics don't permit it before the election. After the election, I think it absolutely well, happens. Right. So I understand the focus on the stimulus bill for sort of the down ballot candidates, but how does the uncertainty right. surrounding the president's health status affect, you know, his platform in terms of a strong economy heading into the election? I mean, that's really what he's running on. 
Sure. I think that's a terrific question. And uh, as I think my answer is this, as long as he continues to project a, uh, a powerful, involved image, I think he's very likely uh, to continue to do whatever's necessary to push things along. Uh, and that includes, uh, if necessary, uh, the ability to use uh, further executive orders uh, to to, to plug gaps uh, should we not get a stimulus bill. Uh, one thing I said uh, to markets this morning was, paradoxically, markets have more to worry about today if Trump's usual way of doing business changes. Uh, if Trump goes quiet mm. and all of a sudden you don't see the tweets and the vigor and the you know projecting himself <laughs> out there, uh, I think markets are probably <laughs> going to get a little bit more nervous about things rather than the other way around. And uh, that's an unusual place to be, but there we are. Someone's got to keep that Twitter account going. All right, so let's talk about job, jobs, right? Because we saw that yeah. gains were slower in September, adding just 661,000 new jobs last month. You know, how closely are you following that as, a, a, you know, whether or not this is a sign of the recovering economy? Is this really the V-shape the president continues to talk about? Well, I'm not going to I'm not going to pick a letter about that. I'm not, not going to say it's a V shape or a K shape <laughs> or U shape or anything else. Uh, you know, these <laughs> things tend to get over. These things tend to get overdone. Uh, but the economy continues to, to to stabilize, continues to add jobs, and the and the unemployment rate continues to go down. I think uh, today's unemployment was something along the lines of 7.6 percent, if I remember uh, if I remember that correctly. Uh, that's all good. Are we going to have a Are we going to have a stimulus? I think we do, but not until after the election. Is that a bad thing? There's mm -hmm. There's a trillion dollars sitting out there that hasn't been used already to deal with stimulus matters and could be used. Uh, so I think what you're going to get is a continued gradual recovery. Not that that makes it easier for anybody who's actually experiencing the uh, the, the bad end of that. Right, but you are an optimist. You're you're bullish. I am bullish on, on the whole. I think it continues. Uh, yeah. I think it continues a little bit more slowly than people would like, but I do think it continues. Yeah. Uh, all right. Great. Well, Terry Haynes, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Tanya. Appreciate it.